Hey everybody, check out more episodes at patreon.com slash alicemate. My balls is totally moving, doing it, proving, knock that we get back up. I've got the heart and desire, my balls are on fire, ready to take us to the top. Was that? <laughs> what did you do, Freeman? Are you breaking <laughs> shit again? <laughs> All hail the king of the west! We're gonna get you in Give me that! Give me that! We're gonna hurt somebody! The king of the west! Let me just prop Excalibur up against the wall gingerly and hope it doesn't fall again. Man! M- maybe welcome to the show! <laughs> Islander over. Jesus! There can uh, only be one. It's supposed to cuss at the start of the show. Nobody uh, cares. You f- up, John. I, keep, I love f- that intro. You realize it would have been way better, Ashley Evan Smith, if this f- idiot having to <laughs> kick my f- sword over in the studio. I got one prop, one prop, miles away from everybody. But nah, this guy who's been knocking f- liquid deaths off the f- table the whole Patreon show. As soon as we start the f- podcast, piffs my. F- Sword at my guest. I'm so sorry. I felt you do not deserve that intro. I apologize. That's on me. That audio was bad. I like the chaos. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you would. You're different. You're an odd person, <laughs> Ashley Evan Smith. Thank you. That's why. Yeah. And I knew that you would find that as a compliment. Yeah. Yes. You're a a, a, a rare breed to be uh, somebody who. I mean, you're pretty hot. I don't want to get weird because especially your boyfriend is my friend, but you're super <laughs> hot. And notice how I can't look at it when I say that. <laughs> Such a weirdo. But you're really hot, Ben. You beat the shit out of people, which means you get the shit beat out of you. Mm-hmm. What is, do you think it is that makes somebody be okay with that? Do you, do you, have, do you have any issues as a child? I, 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 I hope I'm wrong. What is it that you think Nothing kept you going? Like deep seated, it was like a lot of a lot of neglect. And then when I started wrestling at an early age, that's right. And you I wrestled. started winning, and everyone was like, "Oh, a girl beating up boys!" I got all this attention, and I was like, "Yeah, give me more attention." And so I just kept wrestling, and <clears> better and better and better. As a person that isn't even from here, and I should go back where I came from. I've heard that before. <laughs> um, you wrestled in school. Mm-hmm. There was girls wrestling, or you wrestled no. in the boys. Okay, so do you have a brother or something? I do, and that's kind of how it started. You he know? wrestled. No, no, I, I'm the older sister, and yeah. I would beat the shit out of him, oh. kind of bully. Yeah. And um, then one day, his friend John came back from military camp, just double legged the shit out of me, tossed me on my head, and was like, Ugh! I, I learned how to wrestle. And uh, but he told me girls can't wrestle. And then I went out, joined the wrestling team. I had that weird thing in my. Can head. I ask how you join the wrestling team as a female? Like you go in there and go, hey. I know I've got a vagina, but I want to join you guys. Oh, what yeah. What's the deal? Yeah. And how were they? So, you know, I was just like, hey, like I want to wrestle. And they were like, we don't have a girls team, but you can wrestle with the boys if you want. Immediately, they were like, you can wrestle with the boys if you want. Yeah. yeah. Were now, the boys cool with you being in there? At first, it was a lot of like, you got to prove yourself, kind of like cold shoulder. But then I stuck it out, you know, and, and pretty soon the boys, you know, she, they were like, oh, she's not here just to get laid. Oh, wow. You know, because... I didn't think that that would ever be the angle, but okay. <laughs> how, how old were you when that happened? 15. So that's a funny age for that sort of thing, right? Because yeah. it's a very physically intimate. Oh, it's, it's. I mean, sure. I, I did a tiny little bit of wrestling when I was a kid, and it was just sort of weird being that up close and personal even with other dudes. That's a... Uh, I'm not I don't even want... comfortable in my body now, let alone when I was 15. And it... I don't want to make light of it. I, I really don't. But like, this isn't uh, an era where guys get boners even when nothing's yep, going on. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, this is a big question. Yeah. Did a boy ever get a boner? Yeah. Did a boy ever hit on you? I wasn't going to ask that. <laughs> okay. I've grappled with women. And I think yeah. that it took, it did take a little bit of time. Right. When I first started grappling with women and, and I'd be in their guard and my face is like in their tits. Right. I'm like, man, my face is in their tits. Do I put my head? I'm trying to be considerate, and I'm like, wait, but if if I tilt my head, sh- she knows that I'm trying to avoid her breasts. 
But we don't and even I'm not think giving, about it like that in right, the moment. But I'm just know? telling you, at the first couple of girls I rolled with, Gina Carano was one of the first people that ever oh, trained wow. me. Well, that's a hard one to not get. Right, she's really hot, yeah. but she was also Kit Cope's <laughs> girlfriend at the time, so that made it very easy for me to not want to take her that like that. <laughs> but still, she's very hot, and she would uh, box with me, kickbox, and Kit would always, you know, it'd be funny to watch her beat me up because I'm big and I can take a shot. It was laughable. So just keep kicking Jason in the head. It's funny. And I'd be like, how the f*** do you keep landing that foot on my head? And everyone's, everyone's laughing. But then it was like, let's grapple. Gina's not that good at grappling. So to, And you're a bigger guy. So it might even be kind of fair. And it was. It was like a little bit of a scrap. But the first couple of times, I'm not going to lie. The first couple of times in her gut, I was Where do like. you put your hands? She's got huge cans. Yeah. It's very hard to duck those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, but, then, uh, but then after a couple of years of doing jujitsu and stuff, then. When anybody, whenever you circle, it's like, you're up. And I'm like, oh, it's a girl. I give a f <laughs> Like, no. I'm grabbing whatever I can get. I'm going to choke you with it. Like, Yeah, it's not a sexual place at all. Maybe even high school boys. I got think when weird. you're new, it's, it's, it's a very odd place to be. And he even said it was weird for him to grapple guys like that. It is. I think when you haven't done it, the first initial, I like guess in Australia, watching wrestling. I was <laughs> like... Are you holding that guy's butthole? <laughs> <laughs> Butt drag? Yeah, I was like, that, that, I don't want to hold your butthole. That's how Mike and I met. Grabbing each other's buttholes. No, so you know what oil check is? Yeah. yeah. I did that to him the first time we rolled on the mat, and he went over to our coach and was like, who the hell's that girl? And our coach was like, oh, that's Ashley. She likes to win. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you, you, you checked the oil, but you didn't. Okay, you so did it in a, a butt drag way. oil check is like someone's trying to take you down and you basically reach around and oh, kind of stick your finger, your thumb in their butt a little bit to resist the takedown. Yeah. He gets it. Right? I do. Okay. Randy Couture actually introduced me to the concept. Not not, <laughs> oh, not, wow. not manually. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. That's who you heard it from? Yeah. I was was inter- it on the I, show? I was interviewing him and no, it was like he was doing a, an interview for You Faction. interviewed Randy Couture by yourself? <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> what the f- it's like at the X Games talking to Randy oh, Couture. What the wait? You're and he the X was, Games interview in a UFC fighter for something that didn't air during the X Games. They were just like, "We have Randy Couture. Somebody needs to talk to him." Tell he call Randy Couture at this number. Oh my! God, he was a good sport. Are, MMA was he is a MMA. What he's a very nice guy. Also, it wasn't so big then, so he had to tolerate more idiots who didn't know what they were <laughs> talking <laughs> about in those um, days. The other day, they asked me. Um, I was at the UFC Expo, and they were like, "Hey, can you do a quick interview with Don Fry?" I was like. Uh, <laughs> About, That's amazing. Uh, uh, and it was about sex and violence, but then he didn't do it last minute. And I was like, what the fuck am I going to ask Don Fry about sex and violence? <laughs> yeah, I hope um, Don's okay. I actually got a text. From Adam? Yes. Yes. Did you, did you text Don? I did, but he yeah. didn't text me back. He didn't text me it's back. It's always He's- been a weird thing with Don. He's texted me before where I'm very confused that he still knows who I am and, I and cares. Like he's called me before and said, hey, I'm going to start a podcast. <laughs> How do you do that? And I was like, Don Fry? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I- I'm Jason Ellis. Do you know that? And he's like, yeah, that's what I'm calling you. And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, you, you need a board and yeah. microphones. And I'm like, is this fucking really happening? Okay, good. Any any other suggestions? I'm like, it's predator. Just, just be yourself. Yeah, no, I, I know him as fucking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I still watch those. Fights. You're, watch you're familiar with Don Fry? Absolutely. All right. Legend. Legendary mustache. What the UFC greatest. was he in? Like Tony, can you sorry, Tully, can you talk? Sorry, I'm having microphone problems. You're too loud. I believe Don Fry was in UFC negative six. Did that help, Katie? Pride oh, okay. is where a bit. his wars, it's a lot of his thing. famous wars were pride, if I'm correct. Yeah. 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 Well, no, he was he was in Pride, but he was also in <sighs> UFC back in the days of it was kind of like uh, Ken Shamrock and and him. And the giant wrestler guy that also looked like he was 50. Wrestler. Don fought him. Oh, oh you know who. Uh, Dan Severin. Dan Severin. Oh, yeah. Those guys were the top. When, you, when it got to the, like, yeah, everybody competes and then there's the last, like, couple of guys. It was always those last guys standing. Mm-hmm. Did Dan Severin have a mustache? Yeah, full fuck yeah. And did. Don Fry, too. Mm-hmm. Don Fry's was more gay- uh, I know which which he really doesn't like gay people, but he probably doesn't know that I'm half a homo, which works out. But his mustache and his jawline is very what's is it? Tom it's of, Tom of Finland. Tom yeah. of Finland. He doesn't know it, but he looks like a gay Tom of Finland model. And what, I don't want to tell him what that. What is Tom you know. of Finland? Oh my god! See, so you're very straight. 
Uh, it's Tom of Finland, right? I don't know. I just say what Katie says. Tom of Finland. <laughs> sure. Tom of Finland. Thank very, you, Michael. A very classic gay iconography. Ah. Like, yeah, you would have said when you motorcycle seen the, gay. Okay. Yeah, muscly guys with chaps and like motorcycle hats, leather hats, like this, bears, like that. Have you ever seen that? Oh, okay. that's not a bear. That's no, that's no, not like a bear. in the eighties nah, movie. A bear is like Burt Kreischer, but gay. Harry, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the eighties movie, sometimes they'd accidentally go into the gay bar that was like the fruity girly gays, but sometimes they'd accidentally go in the gay bar that was a bunch of motorcycle dudes. <laughs> right, that's where you get <laughs> that's sucked these off. Guys. In the, okay, I've yeah. Seen that. yeah, yeah. That's where you get sucked <laughs> off in the bathroom, lickety split. <laughs> Those guys don't play. I mean, they play yeah. constantly. Not a lot of foreplay. Yeah, no, which is really handy when you want to get a blowjob and you've got to go somewhere. Like, I would just go in there and be like, I'll have a beer. Yeah, you can suck it. <laughs> They're not wasting time. And by the time I finish my beer, I, you know, I jizz my key and I'm out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Easy peasy. Yeah, anyway. And Don Fry good. reminds you of that. A little bit. I mean, yeah. dude. I know. Just like, do it's you like, not it's, see it? It's like Tom Selleck. Just the amount of Tom space Selleck, between the top of Tom the Selleck lip and the bottom like of the nose. But Tom Selleck was flabby. Fucking. Yeah. The, Don was fucking jacked. But just his mustache was jacked. Just the width of the thing. But Tom Selleck wasn't flabby in his heyday? He wasn't shredded. Okay. He, he, was wasn't, he wasn't Don he Fry. He wasn't Don Fry. Okay, never mind. You know, one time in Be- I used to live in Beverly Hills and I was at a, with this really obnoxious roundabout thing where everybody who's rich doesn't stop and everybody yells at each other when they cross. <laughs> and uh, I s- looked behind me and there was a Ferrari convertible and it was Tom Selleck with a big cigar and uh, a bag of, of candy. Like, I think it was M&M's or something. And he poured the M&M's into his mouth <laughs> and fucking choked on the stogie. So and bad. I was just looking in the mirror and I was like, Magnum. Yeah. <laughs> just rip, still ripping. Uh-huh. Like, I'm like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I didn't even really like it that much, but now I'm fucking such a huge fan. <laughs> You're doing a Magnum fucking 40 years later, you dickhead. Yeah, life is good for the poor man's Burt Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's dare. better. Oh, that's how who I was dare. thinking of, Burt Reynolds. Okay. He did own the he did own the the mustache. Who right, did the, right? who who was in Playboy? One yeah, that you're th- you're thinking of Burt Reynolds Burt, yeah. on the on the bearskin yeah. rug. Yeah, and, yeah. Woo. if you like Bush, but yeah. May I ask one quick question? Because my wife, and I didn't know if it was appropriate, but since we're talking about uh, the oil checks and whatnot, everything's appropriate. She on goes, the Jason will you, Ellis show. Will you yeah, please, Ashley's <laughs> aware of what's will happening. You please <laughs> ask her about when you fight and getting and it's a dumb question, but the breast getting punched in the boob. Because for a lot of women, they go, how do they, how do you protect yourself? So I actually have not fought with Manu tools. I got boobies. I got spine surgery two years ago. And then immediately afterwards, while I was still down for the count, I said, fuck it. Give me some titties. Oh so I got some new boobies. And I've how been were your training. titties before? They were like, well, well I You I didn't have at, small ones, right? Well, remember, I'm, okay, so I fought at featherweight uh, initially, which is 145. And then the UFC called and um, I was like, oh shit. And so I had to fight at 135, which is bantamweight. Oh, and wow. then they added the flyweight division. And everyone's like, oh, the, the division's so open. Go down there. And I'm like, I am not a small woman, but I'd like a challenge. Wait, so 125? Twice I made 125. My God. No Dude, titties. You don't understand. No titties. When these people say this. Like, I, I've heard Jason Mayhem Miller at one point, he fought GSP because the UFC did the same thing. They're like, we want you in the UFC. He's like, awesome, finally. Mm-hmm. But it's at 170. Yeah. And Mayhem's like, I'm a 185er, dude. And they're like, you can fucking fight at 170 or you can fuck off. And he said, he did it. GSP beat his ass. Like, imagine your first fight. It's, it's just so happens to be the greatest fighter that will ever live in the history of MMA. So he did well, but he lost. And then they're like, okay, well, you can fight again at 170. And he was like, if I do that again, I, die. I will die. And yeah. I feel like Mayhem was somebody that, sure, he's got a lot of issues, especially now. But at that point, he was one of the more mentally, because he was deranged. He was fucking tough. Like, tough to the point of unhealthy. Because you could not stop him. He would just do insane shit. He went to Japan. He lost 20 pounds on a fucking airplane like he was 20 pounds over and then he showed up in japan and made weight and i was as a guy that you know like losing 10 pounds is insane this guy i don't even, what well, what'd I'll, you do i'll tell you something that my coach told me when the ufc called me on two weeks notice and i had to lose 27 pounds oh. adam lynn shout out <laughs> said i was like coach i don't know if i'm ready i was only like three you know at the time and uh he said when the ufc calls 
you don't say no. Yeah, right. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I got to go for a run right now, you know? Yeah. And not eat. Yeah, yeah. For the whole entire- I was entire- literally eating pizza on the couch because I had fought like a, a month prior. And yeah. was like, ah, oh, I don't have anything booked. I was with a World Series of Fighting at the time. Okay. And then, yeah, when the UFC calls, you put the pizza down. Yeah. Was that after Fallon Fox? That was, yes, after Fallon Fox. So you beat her and then they call you. No, no. I So I beat Fallon Fox. She was my second pro fight ever, which was kind of oh, wow. crazy. Yeah. I had to rise to the Man, occasion. Man, they fucking threw you in. Yeah, I had to rise to the occasion real early. The one with all the buzz behind her and they're like, hey, one fight. Like, get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, did I, they I, want I, you to lose? Oh, yeah. They did, huh? Th- their whole uh, CFA was the organization at the time out of Florida. Florida crazy. Um, they put it on hold when she was outed because she wasn't honest about her sex change. Um, and then they deliberated for a couple of months, which was weird because we we're in the middle of like a 145 pound tournament. The winner got the belt and twenty thousand dollars, which is a buttload of money mm-hmm. when you're only one two fights in. Hell Still yeah. a buttload of money. And uh, so then the commission said, "Okay, you know, you guys can fight." And then we fought and I won. Did she have? No. Any fights as a man? No, she was a male up until I believe like around her 30s. She was in the Navy. She wrestled on the males team in the Navy. Um, had a daughter or a son, I believe, that was like yeah. 18 at the time. Oh, and- what? wait. So when she fought you, what, she was 40? No, I, I mean, I don't know exactly her age. Old so you can Google it, but no, like in her mid-30s because I'm fucking in my mid-30s and I'm still fighting. <laughs> Back then, no, but you're, you're, you're... An established UFC fighter being 30 now is like, yeah, fair yeah. enough. I've seen you fight for a long time. Yeah. We're talking about your second fight, her yeah. third or fourth? I don't remember. Not many. Yeah. It, it, how many fights she had wasn't really what was concerning me at yeah. the time. You That's know? fair. <laughs> Fallon Fox is 47 now. Ah, okay. So, okay, so that was old. in 2000 and I can't do math, but that was in 2012 or 13 that I, we fought. So, so you won that. Won that and, and then, then what happened? got signed to the World <laughs> Series of Fighting. And that was cool. That was on NBC. And uh, fought one time. Uh, Crucifix the girl. Ground and pound. I love that position. And then um, the UFC called in two weeks notice. And they released me from the World Series of Fighting. Because they don't have to do that, right? I was in contract. But they're really okay. cool. They understand that UFC is the dream. They were trying to help you yeah. further your career. Yeah. And that was That's Ali. cool to know. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool to know. Because... Yeah. You know, you got an organization and you're you, you, having you there being really good. That helps. But yeah. to, to know the facts, like if you get in the UFC and you do well, you could make a living for the rest of your life on you this. You really can, yeah. And they were like, yes. Yeah. That's in business. You don't see a lot of you that. You don't. You really don't. And I'm always grateful because, uh, you know, if they would have kept me from that, I might have missed out on the opportunity. You think so? Yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe I would have won a couple fights with World Series and... I don't know. Life is weird, right? The fucking pandemic showed us that anything can happen. Yeah. You have a plan and then the world can take a shit. So mm-hmm. who knows? All right. So you get signed and you 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 made it to 125. So no, I got signed at Bantamweight and I fought that fight. Lost to Raquel Pennington. I actually got like choked out of the last like 10 seconds. I remember oh, yeah. I got choked and I was in a bulldog. Was that a schoolyard? It was yeah, a schoolyard choke like too. A, it's called a bulldog choke and yeah. like you don't really it's see it a lot. It's not really a choke. Yeah, it's kind of some like white belt shit and I thought I could fight it. And I remember right. like hearing like the clacker, you know? Oh, no. And I was like, oh, I could hold this for 10 seconds. And then the next thing I wake up and I'm just like, Mark Smith is there. Like, do you know, do you know where you are? Yeah, because like, I remember oh. you went out as the bell went. And yeah. I feel like when she let you go, if you hadn't have flopped, you were, you were they wouldn't have done it. But yeah. you did do a thing where it was obvious that you were out. Oh, I was out. Yeah. yeah. And they're just like, well, literally like woke up in a pool of like her blood. It was a gnarly experience. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Man, you've seen so many cool Well, you live fights. and die by the sword because, look, okay, t- you're in a choke. You hear the 10-second marker. You can either tap and you lose yeah, or take the chance of, you know, not losing. And- Are you one? I mean, it sounds like you're one of those people that the contest, no matter what the prize is, you have a lot of pride and you will go out on your shield. Oh, yeah. It's, it's live and die by the sword for right. sure. That's how yeah. I feel. I, I mean, I've had fuck all. I've had two fights, but I remember being in a lot of trouble in both of them. And I was like, no fucking way. No. Like my arm was getting flexed in an arm bar. And I was like, I remember thinking if it breaks, maybe I could hide it and <laughs> then beat this dude up. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't remember ever doing the, like raising this in any way. I was like, I'll, I will fucking figure out. I just want the ref to see it pop. 
Yeah. Like I thought that I would get out of it. Does that mentality come from high school wrestling, you think? For sure. Oh, wow. Because I didn't have a lot of adult figures in my life. And when I started wrestling, it teaches you all the best shit, you know, tenacity, perseverance, you know, sacrifice, kind of, you know, um, dieting, all the good things that maybe a, a good parent household would teach you. <laughs> and um, and it's just like in wrestling, it's like make your last rep your best rep, finish hard. It's like these great, you know, kind of like, um, like structure for the rest of your life, you know? Did Absolutely. you compete in wrestling? Yeah, yeah, in high school. They put you in against boys. Yes, in high school, I wrestled so, the boys. Other schools, right? Yeah, I have a good so story So you would for show you. up and they'd be like, okay, you're up against Ashley Evan Smith. And the guy's like, dude, yep. a fucking a fucking chick, really? Yep. Did that happen? Oh, yeah. And then uh, my favorite story is sometimes I would win, sometimes I would lose. But my favorite story is uh, it was a home duel meet and they were like red and we were in. We're purple anyway so we're wrestling and then i beat the boy and i remember like you know going over and rushing to put my sweats back on because no one wants to be in a singlet and i'm hurrying and he comes and he sits next to me and instead of being like upset or sad he was sitting next to me and he looked super happy and i like looked over at him kind of like what is this guy doing and he was like hey i just want to say you did a great job that was really cool um i was wondering if you ever want to hang out sometime <laughs> oh! <laughs> and i was like whoa like and, and now in hindsight i'm like I'm like, congrats to that guy. Would but you be attracted to a man that you can defeat? You won't, right? Not one bit. <laughs> not one fucking bit. So that means it's very hard for you to date somebody. Yeah. There's not many of us on the planet that yeah. can beat you. <laughs> I know your boyfriend. Yeah. He, he can beat you, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Because yeah. he makes me feel like a fucking infant. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So what about, is it ever? did it ever get... Like, uh, you know, like aggressive? Or is there any boys that were being like mean or calling you out for being in it? You know, I heard horror stories from other, you know, high school female wrestlers because I wrestled on the boys team, but then I would go to these uh, girls tournaments and I would win or lose with the boys. But with the girls, when you wrestle the boys all day and then you go compete against females, it was easy peasy. So yeah. I was um, Oregon, Washington, California state champion. Oh, cool. And it was it was. I loved it. I fell in love with it. And I had really, really good experiences, but I heard some horror stories from uh, other girls. Their coaches would kind of like, uh, you know what Iron Man is? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the drill where one person or shark tank, one person's in the middle and then you just have a fresh body, rotate, rotate, rotate. Yeah. So the person in the middle is just getting their ass beat nonstop until they quit. And, you know, high school coaches sometimes would do that to the girls to try to get them to quit. To leave the team. Mm -hmm. so then yeah. Yeah. But not you. No, my coaches were badass. Oh, but I say, I, even if they had done that to you, you would have proven that you are staying. I wouldn't have given up. Right. Something early on clicked in me and it was like, just never say die kind of mentality. I think that's a big, to be a fight, to be a successful athlete, that has to be in there. You can't teach that. Yeah. I, I, I'm always telling people, if you have children, boys or girls, put them in wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. wrestling wrestling that. wrestling not jujitsu sorry mike but like jujitsu and he will say the same thing wrestling wrestling is the best base you can have it's kind of like baby military a little bit yeah because there's discipline yes and exactly. discipline is something you know I, I was always not a fan of that <laughs> but at the time when you're in high school and you're wrestling is there any future in your mind of i could make a living as a yeah, fighter good I, question. the future the my mind was i wanted to get the fuck out of my small town got that's it. all I, and i knew that if i got a scholarship to go to college that was one way out after that i don't know what the fuck was going to happen i had no idea what mma was until i graduated college wow yeah. that worked you got a scholarship and yes I did. To, where'd you go to school menlo college it's a private the college next to stanford in the bay area right sure yeah yeah, yeah. gotcha <laughs> And now you are getting ready to make your return to? Yeah. So I'm currently injured, but I'm also suspended. So, I mean, a lot of people say you probably shouldn't talk about it, but I've been suspended twice now, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. So when was the first one? Uh, 2014. It what was, did you? That after the Raquel Pennington yes, fight. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So at the time I was working with a nutritionist who actually happened to be my ex-boyfriend at the time and or was my boyfriend at the time. And he had given me a diuretic, part of my like supplement package and not really told me what it was. Yeah. And I get a phone call. I, I was already salty because I lost. But, at, you know, at the same time, whatever, it was two week notice fight. And then I get a call from the UFC and they're like, oh, hey, you pop for hydrochlorous. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I never even heard that before. Yeah. Turns out, you know, I look over at my ex and he's, you just, you know, when somebody's guilty. He knew he was giving you something I, illegal. And I was like, ah, fuck, you know? And so 
So that's happened to you twice? No, Wait, you're the, the second, second time. time no, I, I actually uh, sought out a doctor because I've been dealing with a spine surgery, kind of like referred pain for the last two years, just trying to get be better and healthy to get back in the cage. Yeah. So what I did was out of my own pocket, I got blood work done, hair, uh, saliva, all these tests done, hormones, nutrients, just so I could like make sure I was running optimally and heal as fast as possible. Yeah. So the doctor who I told uh, that I was part of the registered athlete uh, testing pool, USADA, gave me this list of supplements. And it was, you know, vitamin K, everything you can get on the CVS um, shelf, right? Very yeah. basic stuff, including a supplement called DHEA. Now, DHEA is still on the banned substance list, you know? And it's just like, it's so, it's almost annoying because obviously it's my fault. I should have been more meticulous. I should have questioned the doctor, right? Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, damn it. These things are so, you know, easily available like the and the list keeps changing all the time and oh. so it, didn't know. the ufc call you and they said they understand your predicament but the fact that yeah we, so they still have to do they did a they... whole um investigation and you know the doctor um called them and basically explained the whole situation and they come back and they say okay we understand that you had no uh, intentions of taking this that it was basically an accident you know but you still have to serve the time, the time. it's in your body yeah yeah so so i'm back after March 3rd from suspension and uh, very excited Let's because go. it's been a long process with the surgery and whatnot and going to bio accelerator. Yes. Love those to. guys. Yeah. Shout out to bio accelerator um, in January, late January to get some more stem cells and then be ready for the return. It's a good idea. Yeah. It's interesting because uh, those, for those of us on the outside, when a fighter gets popped, like they never go, oh, it's right. You caught me. I'm the worst person ever. And I've been taking everything known to man. They always go, oh, is this one little oversight? And just from the outsider's perspective, it's like they probably have done a lot of cheating. And that's the one little place. You know, it was the tip of the iceberg oh, of what yeah. they were doing. You say you have your story, but that other fighters share your specific story. Just if you had to guess, what percentage of fighters who get caught are really cheaters and what percentage are people who just bought the dumb thing or the tainted thing or whatever Good question when you hear something from a, a fighter getting popped you automatically go oh they're a cheater they just got caught this one just like you said you yeah. know so until you've been in that actual situation yeah. everybody is just like you know i i'm guilty too like i thought jessica penne you know was over there doing all the bad steroids and then i get in trouble right. and i completely understand because now i'm in her situation she seems like a bad person oh ouch <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> Just throwing stuff out. You never know what somebody will bite on. What the fuck? <laughs> so you're saying sometimes you can't just have a pictogram in there. Um, you know, Is that what it was? Did you have a pinto? <laughs> No, I, I had the whole thing, but yeah, I don't uh -huh. even know what it's talking about. I just know John Jones. Had, cool. John Jones had a pictogram. Yeah, yeah. we talk. We do a lot of MMA on the show. Pictos, <laughs> you know, I mean, grapple. Yeah. A lot of words in MMA that we use. So, do do you know when you'll be? You know, when you're reinstated, do you have any sense of when you're actually back in the? Oscar? So, since I'm able to fight after March, um, that would usually mean I would want to fight. You know. March first, March, yeah, you right. know, whatever. But I'm going to Bio Accelerator in Colombia in. Basically, I'll be home from that from that uh, trip in mid February, and then, as Jason knows, it takes about six weeks. You have to like completely rest your body because if you are training and doing other things that create inflammation, the stem cells will then go to that inflammation and heal that. So, six weeks. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he followed uh, protocol no? over here. No, you didn't follow. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I might have fallen off my skateboard a couple of times. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to get back in the cage as soon as possible. So yeah. six weeks plus plus uh, an eight week camp mm -hmm. puts me in about May. So wait, so you were a suspended fighter, but you're obviously still in the UFC as good graces mm -hmm. because you do a UFC podcast. You know, it's funny. I shouldn't say this, but I'm like, I don't know why the fuck they haven't cut me yet because I have gone in trouble. Yeah. But at the same time, you know. Every time I fight, mm -hmm. if you watch one of my fights, I leave it all out there. Like you said, live and yeah. die by the sword. And I may not have won every single fight, but they they know I'm never going to say no to a fight. Right. They know I'm going to always make weight. They know I'm gonna, always going to fight my fucking heart out. Yep. And maybe now I have a podcast um, with USC Fight Pass. Maybe that helps a little bit. From an outsider's perspective, you sitting here, hearing you're dealing with life in general you're dealing with a spinal injury you're dealing with working out you're dealing with contracts all these things you have to manage full time i could not to 
I, I could see how something like that could happen. It was an I, oversight for sure. An oversight with a million other things, especially if you're in pain and you're just, I want to get back to where I want to be. Like I said, if I sense. wanted to cheat, like I know people, right. we all know people, yep, we yep. could get the good shit, you know, and I wouldn't have gotten in trouble. This was an honest mistake. Sucks that it happened twice because people just, you know, you're right. it's like, judgy. oh, okay, you, you've been caught, you know, you're probably taking all this other stuff. But then I would also be like, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more fit than the last time I was on your show, but that was right after my surgery. I was looking at the... Last time I was on your show, yeah. beating up Kevin. Kevin and yeah, I, I would not have noticed. <laughs> you didn't look. No, you look like a shut up. Fu- you did. I was thick as fuck. I didn't take. I didn't. T- I would say. I would be honest. Okay. I was like, yep, she came. But what and I'm she saying kicked is like one of us, and that was cool. You, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's all aesthetics, but if you look at me even now, or like even when I'm on the scale, I don't look like one of those fighters that's like, dang, test this bitch, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like what Conor McGregor looks like right now. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. What are exactly. your thoughts on that, Conor McGregor? Yeah, like him allegedly. Do you think that he's using and net because he's not in Usada? Is this something that so you could get in trouble? I've been I don't need very to talk about it. silly. No, no, no. I just I've been very silly with my like I can be naive sometimes. I used to be friends with Gabby Garcia, and when we were really good friends, um, we were training at a classic fight team together. People would give her shit online about using steroids, and then I would be on there like, oh hey, that's my friend, and you know, kind of standing. Wait, up you for didn't her. think she was using? She never said she was, so but I would like to give you... people the benefit of the doubt. Okay, that's. It's very generous of you, but yeah. So that's that kind of how I is... am with with Conor McGregor. It's like I don't know. I can't. I don't like to speak on things I don't know about. Yeah. And until we have solid proof, we should probably shut the fuck up. But eh. okay. Well, then here's another one. T.J. Dillashaw. Oh, he for sure retiring after oh. testing positive. You didn't know he retired. I saw that he retired. Just a little Twitter, but it, it's because he tested positive. No, he just retired. I don't know where. So I don't know. What, I think it's a weird thing to pop. He doesn't want to be in the testing pool anymore or something? No, he's out of Emma. He's retired from mixed martial arts, from losing a fight that he had one arm in. Like that shoulder came out. I saw it come out. But for some weird reason, he's got- It could got- be an emotional thing right now. We are emotional people, fighters. Yeah. You know that. You know? It's a hard job. I'm fucking done Any- with it. And then they come back. Right. You think, oh, okay. So you think maybe, maybe. this is just a- People have done it before. Because apparently he's getting shoulder surgery and the doctor said that he might have to have another shoulder surgery. And I think he's just like, you Maybe know Maybe he's what? being smart. It's over. We only have one body. Yeah, you're right. I feel like Bio Accelerator, to bring them up again, that yeah. was one of those things where, you know, I mean, from all the injuries from my skateboard life, like my shoulders came out so many times. At one point I would do it for a party favor and I, I separated them and I, I broke them and dislocated them and broke my wrists so many times and tore my knees a lot. And then it got to the point where one of my shoulders started hurting without training. Because then the other thing, like, like being an MMA guy after being a pro skateboarder was not probably the greatest idea. But <laughs> my jab hand, because I was you know a lot, a lot more into boxing, especially when my knees started to go. And I would put in a lot of work. You know, I'd throw fucking hundreds of jabs a week. And it started to just ache. Yeah. And I was like 45. And I'm like, wait. If this got any worse, I would chew a fucking Vicodin. And if I have to chew a Vicodin to do my deeds for the day, I know me. I'm a fucking junkie. I will fucking end myself. Oh, yeah. So the fear and then all of a sudden this realization of all those years of being an athlete and people go, man, you're going to be fucking sore when you're old. I'm like, fuck off. Like, I feel fine. And I'm like, dude, 45 is not old. And this thing is starting to pulsate. And then then knowing that... uh, that uh, bioaccelerator can give you these stem cells that can make that pain go away and maybe even make your arm strong again. Then you're stuck in this thing where I'm like, I'm back. I can do anything I want. But if you do it again, you're going to go back to them again. Yes, yes, yes. And it's, you know, the yeah. kids, you know, you're going to run with your kids. I'm like, yeah, not exactly. Like, I don't think Tiger cares if I run with him in the fucking park in 10 <laughs> years from now, but I don't, I don't want to waddle everywhere. I don't want people to like help me out of a car. Yeah. That would be something that I would not be able to handle. You get to a point where it's like, and and you have your last fight ever coming up, right? I think he pulled out. Oh, motherfucker. I think he's stuck in me. I think somebody finally convinced him that he would. Get his ass beat. Yeah. He, <laughs> he was going to, but he won't even return my text right now. Is oh, it all about. He said he tore his meniscus. Oh. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I don't think I can train. I was like, I have half of a meniscus in one knee and the other one is just laughable my doctor laughs at it you can fight 
He's like, I can barely run. I'm like, I haven't been able to sprint for like 15 years. The fuck? I'm going to beat your ass, dude. Like, I'm going to get, like, if I was you, I'd get uh, stem cells and get cortisone and you got six months to fucking train. But he's not like us. He's not like, this, he's, he's a comedian, right? But that was, yeah, that was the thing that I was trying to explain. It was my friend, Eddie Jackson, who's a fucking real fighter, was yeah. like, dude, trust me. He's not like us. And I've always had this respect for you guys because I've been in it enough to know that I'm not the one. You know, like I do pretty good. I'm pretty tough. I, it's, it's hard to make me quit, but I'm not on your level. I know I'm not on your level. But you do have that crazy. I remember. I do have the mentality yeah, of a you, fighter, but my body doesn't want to come with me anymore. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. It's like get, you get to a point where what's the trade off and is the risk outweigh the benefit? You know, do you, for me, it, my doctor told me if I continue my continue to live the lifestyle that I live, um, <laughs> I will most likely have to go back for another surgery on yeah. my oh. C5 because I got the C6, C7 disc um, replaced. Yeah. And he said, if you continue your lifestyle, you will probably have the another surgery. Yeah, I've been to Bioaccelerator twice. Yeah. Because I'm they fixed me. And when they fixed me, I fucking went back in full speed. I was like, wait, I can move my knees? I can run because my ankle was fucked as well. I got a lot of bone spurs and a lot of tears, but I could run like for 20 minutes. Be pretty sore, but not sore like crippled. And I'm like, I'm back, baby. I'm doing jujitsu again. I'm doing fucking grappling yeah. and all that stuff. And, and it's starting to, I'm getting hurt again. I hurt my neck. Like I, I do an skateboard demo. I hit my head and I might have to go. I'm trying to duck it. Is it, but it won't come back. It's it's hard though because when you know that you have that option of stem cells, you kind of push it a little bit harder. Yeah. You're like, well, I can always get better. I just feel like, you know, my good friend Tony Hawk, who's 54 and has got a broken leg, and they had to take the fucking the pole out and put a bigger one in to make it rejoin better, and him worried about whether he'll ever skate again. And I'm like, I know we're going to be older. And I know one day that we probably won't do any of it anymore. But this is us. This is who we are. And if I have to be uh, in pain for the last 10, 20 years, it's a fair trade for me. Is Tony it's... not going to get stem cells? No. What the heck? I know. And I've talked to him about, but I don't want to do it on here. Okay. But bio okay. Accelerator. Um, I, I'm like, dude, I've got, they know you, they yeah. are ready. Who does You can go there right now <laughs> yeah. and they will do it. But I think. Does he not like planes Does he doesn't he like, like he doesn't like what's going on he doesn't like surgeries and 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 weird little edgy things that haven't been completely proven mm. which okay. is weird because now he's got a few skateboard friends that have also been to bio accelerator and a mcdonald has no wrist pain anymore i'm like that should tell you yeah yeah but i i don't know maybe if this doesn't work then he would opt for that yeah but yeah he does have a weird thing about going there because i i told him to come with me the last time I was like, just come with me. Yeah. Fucking whack up your neck because he's got a worse neck than me. Like if you ask him something, he'll get, he goes, yeah. 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 He that's, doesn't go. Yeah. yeah. That's old wrestler, old wrestler move. Right. Yeah. Old wrestler moves. My old coach used to move like that. <laughs> Tito Ortiz has demonstrated his elite yes. neck, neck flexibility <laughs> for us. Like, look at me. I'm ready to go. I got to fight next week. Look oh at this neck. God. I'm ready. Yeah. He had a lot of neck surgeries, right? Yeah. Like not one, like five. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But we can't stop. It's who we are. It's a part of who we are. And that's why I wanted to take that last fight. I'm way past fighting 51 with not that much ability and all those injuries. It's a stupid thing to do. But this guy's a bum. And he wanted to call me out because you think you want to get a taste. I'm like, I don't believe that you want to get a real taste. So I'm up for the fucking challenge because I believe that when it gets to crunch time, you're going to start shitting yourself. And when you look into my eyes and I look into yours, when we touch gloves, you're going to realize you fucked up. And you're already st starting to realize it now. And that's why you're pulling the, oh, my meniscus. I want, oh, he won't give it to me, but I want that fucking MRI of his meniscus get against my meniscus <laughs> and how he's not going to fight because his meniscus is torn. And now I don't have any fucking meniscus and I'm going to beat your fucking, I'll pull it out and beat your ass with it. <laughs> I got a fucking heart condition. <laughs> I'm like, if I, I don't want to redline my heart anymore. I'm like, your heart did great. Go for a casual jog, do some boxing. But no, I'm prepared to slip and then you fall on me with your fucking blue belt and you start wanking on trying to waste my fucking time. I'm prepared to get choked in front of everybody by some bum. Now, is it just Luis Gomez or would you just like to have one more fight? 
No, it's, I don't want to have one more fight. Oh, you don't? I don't really care. You just want to shut him up. I wanted to give him what people gave me. Because I think that there's people that are, I've had fights with that they they did it because they wanted to give me the experience. Like, I fought good guys that were for sure going to beat me. Yeah. But I was like, don't go soft on me. Like, I want to know what it's like. How close am I? It, like, get, And I'm not going to quit. Like, I'm going to go. Yeah. And he wanted to do it. And I was like, oh, he wants to... He wants to feel what it's like to be a real fighter. Yeah. And I'm the perfect level for him because I'm not that good. You could win. You know, like you, you do have a chance. So I was willing to go. And I, and I thought it was a good way to go out. Like like uh, to fight at 51. And then I've already got two. So if I won again, it'd be 3-0 and oh at 51. That's awesome. I like that. Yeah. Sounds good. Fills yeah, yeah. my heart. I, I could be very happy with that. And, and you know that when you have a, a fight date... Life is a little different, right? Yeah, you it, like literally like. See, that's the thing that annoys me the most. And I'm sure this has happened to you. But this guy pulling out, I'm like, I've put my whole life on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Like when I wake up in the morning, I think about I'm fighting you in April. Yeah. yeah like, now I'm now gonna, you got blue balls. Yeah. Oh, fighting blue balls. For sure. Yeah. Because yeah. I've, I've like, like I wake up in the morning. I don't think about comedy. I think about how you're not going to, you don't know how much I care about winning this fight. Yeah. Like you will not it consumes take your thoughts. that from me. It you does. will not, nobody will. Uh, if my heart starts jumping and I'm, I'm gassed, I'll be like, die. <laughs> I'm not letting, I'm not going, oh, I fucking feel weird. I'm fucking going. I don't think there's anything lose. else that gives you that feeling. Maybe high vert skating, crazy, maybe that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've been doing a dangerous trick is, is d definitely some adrenaline, something that I've been working on a long time. And then I make it definitely a, a, a euphoric feeling, yeah. but there's nothing cause I'm fighting a ramp and the ramp doesn't hit back. hide me. It doesn't hate me. <laughs> it's not personal. Yeah. And I'm not a, I don't like, uh, like real argument stuff. Like I fight fun. It's a sport. I'm trying to win. That's it. I don't hate you. I hope you don't hate me. <laughs> I hope afterwards we can be friends. Yeah. Like I don't, I can't get into that. I see other people doing it. Oh, I'm not a trash talker either. I'm happy for them, but I can't. I want to have a beer, you know, afterwards. Yeah. If out. we start arguing for real, like I'm going to probably get teary <laughs> and then start like pulling your face off. Like I'm not, it's not calm for me. It's bad. So I, I wanted, you know, I, I wanted to end like that. But I, the last fight I had was, I thought I was going to have more fights, but that fight went so bad. And I still won. That I I was only in it to see how strong are you, how tough are you, like how much can you take? Yeah. And I felt like that's how much I can take. I do not need to prove to myself anymore if I'm a tough guy. I know that I'm tough. Yeah. I'm proud of myself. Yeah. If you get me and and I'm in trouble, it's not over, buddy. It's nowhere near you fucking with the wrong guy, and I can live and sail off on that for the rest of my life but for that guy and then all the other people that he's fans and i know he's friends with this anthony cumia guy who's like a fucking piece of shit <laughs> and they want the gay guy to die you know, they want the gay guy to lose suck it the fucking homo lost oh really that's that's in my that's head what you're fighting like people who are, want you to lose because of your sexuality i i don't know if it's true or not i just see it that way oh, okay. he's friends oh with you've created people. this in your mind to Fuck give it. you a little bit more he's friends with people that despise me <laughs> Okay. I know that for a fact. Okay, okay. So if he beats me, those guys are laughing. They'll be happy. So what? I'm not fighting Lewis. I'm fighting his friends that hate me. Yeah. I'm going to knock him out. And I suck dicks and I knock out your fucking boy for fun. <laughs> Come see me. Yeah. Haters are motivating as well. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Probably shouldn't have admitted that. Ashley, do you feel like you have... Obviously, you want to get a belt. But like, do you have a chip on your shoulder like Jason had something to prove to himself. And he says, whatever, if he never fights again, he takes that with him and he knows he achieved the thing. Do you have a thing that you're trying to accomplish that you want to be able to feel about yourself or say about yourself when you're done fighting, even if you never get a belt? I think it's kind of like what Jason said. We have already proven to ourselves. Like I know I'm a bad bitch. I yeah. know I'm tough, but at this point in my career, yes, you always, if you're not going for the title, you should be the fuck out, you know, get the fuck out. I believe, um, especially with a lot of the 
alterations I've made in my life. Um, three plus years of sobriety, new coaches, new mentality, new body parts, not the boobies, the spine surgery. Um, I feel like I'm a real contender still, even at 35 years old. Sure. Yeah. I've done a lot <clears throat> with only a handful of fights, really. I'm still... <clears throat> Only 10 fights in, sorry, um, in my pro career, but I've been fighting for over a decade. I should have way more fights, but because of injuries, the pandemic, the transgender getting put on, you know, yeah, put, in, put on hold or whatever. Um, I feel like I don't have anything to prove to myself, but I just know in my heart that I can still hang with the best of the best at, in my division or multiple divisions, either flyweight or bantamweight. I watched these girls while I've been for the last two years on the bench and me and my boyfriend are there like, oh, we would love to, t to fight this girl. We right. like, we can see the game plan. All I need is my body to catch up to my mind. Right. And, um, you know, I'm always going to be going for the gold, obviously. Um, and I, and I think the UFC, we talked about earlier, like, why the fuck are they still, do they have Ashley Evan Smith? You know, there's some good things. There's some bad things. They know I'm always going to come and I'm going to fight. And so I feel like I'm not proving anything, but I just truly love this. And I know that I can hang with the best. So why hang it up? That's a dangerous woman, if you ask me. I love it. Um, celebration wise, when you win, you're out there, you're sober now. But did you ever have some big parties? I know that there's a story that I'd like to hear before we wrap it up right now where Chuck Liddell <laughs> and uh, our friend. Uh, this is not my story. This is not your Were story. Were you not in the room for this? Oh, no. But... <laughs> This is a story that Ian McCall told on my podcast. Okay. And uh, I'll give you the quick version. You can go and either listen to one of Ian McCall's many podcasts or my podcast. But um, he and Chuck Liddell, the Iceman, were partying. I believe it was in Vegas, probably. And they were sharing some females. And I believe that there was an Eiffel Tower situation where yeah. the two guys and one girl in the middle. And Ian McCall basically yeah, tells the story of being mid threesome and uh, flicking Chuck Liddell in the balls. Oh. Yeah. It's a kind of funny Jibber, game. Jibber Eiffel Tower, Jason. <laughs> no, because I don't high five. Right. Uh, it's gay. <laughs> but I, and you may be gay, but you're not gay. I've done, a, I've done it where you, I've gone like, oh, there, no. you, there you go, you fucking idiot. But I'm not like anybody, hey, hey, hey Alice. I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> like, I, I'd rather you weren't here, honestly. But you got sometimes you got to do what you got to do I, when you're gross. I have a quick question. Yeah. Though. So you get the strap, okay? You win your division. You staying in there or do you walk off into the sunset? Oh, walk off into the fucking sunset. Amen. Oh, you're the wow. first person ever. Dude, be, yes. I'm smart. You know? Oh, yes. Like, look. I love that. You know, Dana White says uh, this is not a career. You know, what he calls He's like, it's not a career. It's an opportunity or something like that. And he's really fucking... Right. You know, this is not something you can do forever, obviously. Right. So the goal is get in, make as much money as you can, win as many fights as you can, make a name for yourself and More then use that name yeah. to, you know, whatever you want to do. Is it podcasting? Is it skateboarding? Is it stand up comedy? And then you go off and you go into the sunset. For me, when I win that belt, I have proved something to myself and, you know, like, um, gain that sense of accomplishment and then i save the rest of my brain cells that i have left for whatever i want to do in my later years that's so a really good idea that. check yeah. you out amazing yeah but isn't the can you really walk away with the strap when yep. as soon as you do that do no 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 but i'm very saying, rare as soon as yeah. you do that don't yeah, they dangle big fight. don't yeah. they dangle the biggest check oh, you've ever seen in your life for course, one more fight of course of course right. but at that point it's like we we're talking about with our bodies you only got one body you only got one brain not to bring the vibe down but cte is a real fucking thing yeah. and you don't even know if you have cte until you're dead yeah there's no studies until you're running for senate in georgia <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't get this joke on oh, my head. A dead guy got voted for. No, no, Herschel Walker. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, he's so. He's a it, dead person. <laughs> it would he's be so hard. He's dumb. He's dead. Wait, is Herschel Walker dead? Yes, in the mind. Oh, oh, he also so did MMA late in life. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. Yeah. Like 40 yeah. almost, yeah. I think. I think, yeah. I think 45, 46. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yep. Yeah, I wanted to fight him at one point. That's right. That's yeah. right. I was like, get that bum. Oh, he's... he's and yeah, no, it's probably wrong, but yeah, whatever. That's uh, I'm up for it, you know? I love it. Uh, so you are, you, you, you do have a, a, a plan, and that is podcasting, and you're a podcast 
is sex and violence. Yeah, podcasting is is part of Ashley. the gig right now. What's it with, with Rebel Girl? How do you say it with Rebel it's Girl? It's right? sex and violence with Rebel Girl, all right. spelled out on all social media and all that. But I've actually started doing cage side reporting with a local fight promotion called Up yeah. Next Fighting. Awesome, and, that's a good idea. You know, I I love it. It's Talking to my coworkers, it's easy peasy. I'm not the best at it yet, but but the- you get there and you have the ins- in- the the insight because you are one of them. And it- I think the more they have actual athletes from that sport talking about that sport, no offense to all the other people, they do great stuff too. But I always appreciate somebody talking on behalf of the actual athletes that is one of them i want the judges to be former athletes more so yeah wow well said (laughs) that is a bigger person's uh, reply (laughs) because yes that shit is ridiculous yeah sometimes you're just like what the fuck like who is judging this fight (laughs) i mean you've obviously seen some of the judges sometimes like there's what's the old guy that i think he might have finally died i know you're talking about he can't see there's no way he can see the fucking fight no way he's so old that his chin has gone past his neck and he's you know, maybe just like, ah, ah. yeah. And I'm like, look, I've seen him. I'm like, look up. <laughs> you know, like, look at the fight. He's like, ah. I'm like, you looked up for one second, and I, your eyes are all like, you know, when they start to grow over the actual lens, it just looks like he's got wide eyes, he's like he's about blind. to be a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> and he's the head. That guy won. I'm like, you don't even know. It is a fight. It hasn't started yet, you old cunt. <laughs> yeah, they're the worst. All right, but uh, do we do we have to wrap? I thought we. We went a long time. I don't mind. Are we at that time? No, I don't know. That went by fast. 53 minutes. Oh, okay. Hey, so I thought it was over an hour. Sorry. Must have started I think late. we started a little late. Okay, we have a couple good. things we can do before we wrap here. Jason, did you send us a video of an Australian couple in a car? With a snake, mate. <laughs> Just another day. This is probably something you faced every single morning on your way. Every to day I went to work, there was a fucking snake in my car. <laughs> a snake or a spider or a fucking koala. Either one, tackle the cunt, and then off to work I go. But these guys, these must be fucking tourists. Because they're all weird about the snake coming out of the car. But it's pretty good. Oh. See the little snake head there. Oh, fuck. It must have been in the fucking... I've, I've fucked her before. Oh, it's a green snake. Maybe you need to pull over. Nah, mate. Oh, I'm going to do it so I can just get out. I can't. There's nowhere to fucking pull over. <laughs> it's a fucking I can snake. barely understand these idiots. Oh, I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> oh, no. The poor snake. The poor snake. That's oh, what man. I started thinking. He looks like he's head I'm not fucking stopping, mate. I mean, what? You're going to fucking flick it off? I ain't. Falling off. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, oh, well, I can't do anything. The snake has CTE for sure. Oh, yeah. The guy called his wife, <laughs> mate, so or the snake? Scary. Oh, his wife. You I love you, mate. I love you, mate, but I did it. Oh, where am I going to pull over? I'm just over? saying. Bubba, there's a snake on the car. Oh, fuck. Oh, there's a kid. Oh, there's a kid in the back. Yeah, he's traumatizing a child. Look at this fucking snake. Just fly off. Stop it. It's going to hurt us. He's stuck in the back. Yeah, he's stuck in the back. He starts to lift his head up. That's when it gets real critical. Oh, no. Sudden. As it starts crawling out of the inside of the car, it just gives it more slack to smack around. Well, she starts getting shit whipped. I think. Oh, oh no! At one point, the mum says, "Oh no! Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, no! It's like someone's beating up a muppet." Oh, no. It's a, it looks like me trying to shake the piss out of my dick. Sorry. He's trying so hard. You can do it, little guy. Get out. I don't think he should. There's a shoulder. Okay, okay. Here's your chance. Pull the fuck over. I don't know, but he's getting longer. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting longer. Oh, I don't want to get anywhere near it. <laughs> That's a smart call. I don't think would you ask? Would you guess that that is a dangerous snake, snake, Jason? Nah. Just it's a green tree so snake. So, so you know off. for a fact that it's okay. Oh. Nah. But I reckon I would call okay, it. Okay, they pull over. Tree snake, you're fine. Oh no. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it came out. Because it wasn't on the road. <gasps> the kid, wow. The kid said something about it. <laughs> Where's the snake, Dad? Where is the cunt? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like Australians, man. It's a crazy world out there. One time there was a big spy that came out of my revision mirror and then held on to the entire revision mirror and 
I was like, wow, look at that. And we're all driving. I'm like, man, that is a fucking big spider. And then it went back in. Oh. And I was like, Ugh! started looking at the air vents. And it's like, no, there's no hole in the in the mirror. He can't make it into the car from the mirror. And I'm like, you don't know that. You don't know if that mirror is not like a little hole that goes inside the car. Like, how did he get in there in the first place? But I've seen him big enough where you see him run off into the bushes. Have you ever been bit by a snake? Yeah, oh, yeah, a lot of times. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to do... I used to be friends, well, enemies, but I have a relationship with this eight-foot anaconda. When I first started doing radio, I had a friend, Donald Schultz, and he came in and he was a guy that like uh, was a snake guy. He had all kinds of snakes. One time at the, he was like in a glass compart in a glass room and he lived in the mall for like three days with like a hundred poisonous snakes what? he's a fancy guy like that what the fuck i don't know south africans <laughs> <laughs> but he pulled the fucking snake out of a pillowcase put it on the table and i was like oh and i didn't know but apparently i'm scared of snakes because <laughs> i was like man i'm having a feeling right now where i need to get out of this room and everybody made a big deal and everyone's calling and saying shit on myspace about how i'm a pussy with snakes so then I called Donald Schultz and I was like, do you have a really big snake that bites people that doesn't have venom? And he was like, yeah, for sure I do. Got an eight foot anaconda. And I was like, that sounds terrifying. Bring that in. Oh because I kept thinking, I'm trying to get viewers, man. I'm trying to get listeners. And I was like, if, if I'm driving a car and some crazy Australian dude is super scared and an eight foot anaconda bites him, I'm not changing the channel. I'm staying on. So that was my theory. And I wanted it so bad. I was willing to do this. So they brought it in and they had like three guys holding it. And he just didn't like me. So as soon as I put my hand in front of him, he bit me straight away. So he bit me there and then tried to put his body on the rest of my arm and started trying to pull my arm off. And those guys unwrapped him. And I, I remember thinking, if I was alone right now, I think that guy might win. <laughs> like, I think so I might strong. die. Did it have teeth? Yeah, fuck yeah, little ones, not the big fangs, just tons of the little ones because they snapped off in there and they got in. I had like a this weird U shape from his bite mark and then every now and then little pieces of his teeth would come out like a oh week later. So it got infected, it was all puffy and shit. So then ESPN, the magazine, go, hey, man, we want to do an interview about you because you're on the radio and you skate and shit. I'm like, cool. And it's the screaming issue. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever that means. So they want me to scream with a snake. I told the story on a podcast with Tony the other day, but this famous photographer, I don't know he's famous. I don't care. But he comes in and he's got a beard and like a mustache. He's got scuba diving gear to take <laughs> photos of me in this fucking, in my pool with the snake. <laughs> so I'm familiar with this guy. He's bitten me. He, in the end, he ended up biting me on the back of the head while I held the transgender girl's penis. It, the radio, wow, it escalated. Wow. Things always escalated. <laughs> But then, so now I'm friends with this guy. He's bit me like three times. So they go, can you go in the pool, go underwater with him in the pool and hold the snake and uh, and scream at it while it screams at you? I'll send you Whoa. the photo because I somebody just sent it to me because I was talking on Hawk versus Wolf. I'll send it to you, Katie, so you can put it up. But um, this I'm screaming at this snake while the snake is clearly trying to bite my face. <laughs> While I try to act like it's okay and this is going to be a photo for a fucking magazine. Or drown you. Well, dude, I'm... here's the thing. The, the pool's not very deep. Oh, Thank God. God for that. Okay. But at one point, I'm trying to pull it away from me and it fucking... I missed the body and the body went around my head. Across my eyes and my ears. Not my neck. But across my eyes and my ears and then started bound down so like where i started to feel my head feel like it was gonna crack oh my god so now oh. i'm yeah i'm oh. deaf Whoa. and i'm blind and i just stand up and i go somebody help me the snake is squeezing my head and then everybody unraveled the snake from me and then i had to go in the garage for the biting scene so of course this thing starts biting me and i noticed that the photographer's got a bunch of coke coming out of his <laughs> nose <laughs> into my into his mustache and i'm trying to i'm trying to signal to my wife at the time you know, look at a fucking boulder uh, this fucking snake anaconda is biting me while I'm trying to tell Katie to look, sorry fucking Andrea to look at the fucking coke in this dude's mustache it turns out he, he left a bunch of coke on the top of the toilet seat oh my God. I'm like man I got kids in the house that was like not the coolest thing 
That's never an happening. epic fucking picture. <laughs> cool photo though, right? Holy shit. Yeah. That's, I literally would have thought that was Photoshop. Nah, I was that- really down there with that fucking thing for like an hour. <laughs> That's so Kept cool. trying to attack me. <laughs> <laughs> Way to conquer your fear. Yeah. I still, yeah. If that guy's around, like, uh, that's what I'm saying, haters. Like, if you're that snake and you want to come, I- I'll give you my address. <laughs> I'm not flinching any of Louis J. Gomez, Anaconda. I don't give a fuck. I'll fight all of you. I'm better than you. And finally, speaking of cool photos and cosmetic enhancements as you were earlier in the show, Ashley, I think we've talked about, what's this lady's name, Katie? Mary? Uh, Mary Magdalene. You can't ignore a headline like, I'm an OnlyFans model and I almost died trying to get the world's fattest vagina. Oh, no. But I'm having more surgery down there. I didn't know that. I didn't know you could fatten it up. The quest for the world's fattest vagina. If you want to have fun on Instagram, I highly recommend following her. Oh, her breast, one of her breasts popped recently. (sighs) She's desperately looking for like a proper surgeon that deals with large breasts to... um to help her i'm not sure there is a oh. proper surgeon who deals with breasts of those natures. and what if is she do doing it- in the meantime until she finds the Whippets. surgeon Whippets. she does <laughs> she does oh really she goes live for like 12 hours at a time what's this woman's handle 1800 <laughs> leave mary alone is her main account it usually gets banned a couple of times yeah, a year. Yeah, she just got it back. It got taken down for, I think. For doing, doing Whippets live over and over again, passing out, <laughs> playing one song for 12 hours. Funky mm-hmm. Town. Funky Town, while doing Whippets. <laughs> She's the fucking mayor of Funky Town. Wow. She is. She's, I love her. Yeah, wow. we should get her on the show. Yeah. I don't know if she'd fit in the studio. <laughs> but you I should get her on to. your show, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would probably be a, make more sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have her over, though. I don't know if this is the right account, but this one is crazy. Yeah, that's probably it then. One eight hundred. Yeah, one eight hundred. Leave Mary alone, pickles. Yes, and there's Mary Sebastian Pickles as her backup, which you will need to follow as well because she gets banned a lot. I have so many questions from my podcast. She's great. <laughs> Why she, pickles? I highly recommend it. Wow. I don't know. Yeah, she has know. like a her whole thing is pickle cult. All of her fans. She lives. She rents. Airbnbs and then buys furniture for the fucking Airbnb. Like thousands of dollars worth of furniture that she'll like leave and go to another place. Why? Because she's making tons of money on OnlyFans and she's so whipping it out that she's like on Amazon buying like flower pot plant, like big things that go in houses that cost tons of money. Look at this. I fucking bought a, I bought a fucking this pot with a fucking tree. <laughs> It's art, and it's art. It's like 20000 aboard it. And then, blah, whip it, pass out. New house. <laughs> Just, why, why whip it, do you think? Yeah, that because I never I've, I never got it. I did it, but I never was like, hell yeah, I'm going to sit in the house and fucking fry my mind. I thought a whip it was like what kids did because they couldn't get real drugs. <laughs> she would get, she's got the one with, that actually makes the soda machine. So she has the bottle. She screws the whole thing on, and then she's all, whoosh, because her lips are all fat. She just inserts it in one side of her fat lip. And it's just like, whoosh, while the rest of her fucking dumb, dumb, melted face is like, ah, and then she's like, you got blah, 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 and then passes out. Man, everybody loves her. She's really fun. She also <laughs> creates art. You can follow her art page. Oh, the art is dope. Yeah. yeah. She actually does make some. She's a talented person. Really cool stuff. There's a, there's a talented little person screaming to get out of this fat, <laughs> swollen bitch. <laughs> Sounds like she has addictive personality. She's got a dick somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But she is. I highly. I don't think we're good. We're big enough to get her on. I think Joe Rogan might be, have more of a chance. I don't, I don't think she goes on anyone's show. Like right. she doesn't, she answers to no man. Yeah, that's what I think. I think if you were like, so one o'clock tomorrow and she's like, yeah, whoosh, that's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unreliable. Yeah, I feel like this is like, this is what punk rock looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's in, real. In 2022. Like it's being, in a, real. being in a punk band is not very punk, really. It's just a thing people have been doing for 50 years. She's this on- is fucking you were on the highway to hell <laughs> she was on tmz getting thrown out of a club a uh, daytime at boys town and her uh, one of her ass cheeks and titty out <laughs> and she's like yelling at people on the street but that's not one time that's like three times a week for public nudity no she didn't get arrested 
She's like, look at this crazy bitch. She's being too rowdy. Uh, yeah. she's probably it's probably fun as fuck to hang out with. Yeah, but not in your house. No. No. <laughs> So. Is she here? <laughs> you, you imagine that? That would surprise me. Oh that would God. not fucking surprise me. <laughs> Best podcast ever. She's surprise like, <laughs> <laughs> who called? I'm <laughs> your new neighbor. I Hello. S- wow. I swear. I am fucking scared right now. <laughs> this is my Airbnb. I'm looking for a giant shadow through the door right now. That was good timing. Oh, man. All right. Thanks for being on the show, thanks Ashley. For having me, guys. It's always good to hang out with you. Jonathan, thanks for making it up here. We love Pleasure. you, dude. Fuck you, Tully. And yeah, maybe later, Katie. Don't, <laughs> don't die.